All right, this guy needs no introduction. Bruce Gradkowski, uh, former Toledo Rocket and now an NFL analyst basically everywhere. Bruce, you're pretty popular these days, man, especially right now. Like the, the draft going on, everybody wants to talk to you right now. Hey, it's good to be busy right now, I guess. You know, it's been a, it's been a crazy time for all of us. So I just I just want everyone to know my family and I are just thinking about everyone in Toledo. We're, we're praying for everyone with small businesses that are, you know, in the healthcare industry, uh, nurses, doctors that are supporting other way, you know, our local firemen, police officers. I mean, it's just, it's cool to see the community come together during a time like this. And, you know, I've been in contact with local churches at Cedar Creek, St. Joe's, uh, the Tabernacle downtown. And man, the, the just un unselfish attitudes of some of these guys Calvin and Christine with the Tabernacle downtown, Ben Snyder with Cedar Creek, you know, in, uh, in St. Joe's and Mommy here. You know, it's, it's just cool to see people come together during such a tough time. So you're right, Jordan, I'm, I'm blessed to stay busy. And, you know, it's fun that football is still on that we can watch to get our minds preoccupied with some of the, the stuff going on. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's, uh, even last night, just the draft, it was it was fun to be able to sit and just watch something uh, that, that kind of kept all of us together. That was exciting. Uh, all right, so let, let's start early on. Joe Burrow, everybody kind of knew that Joe Burrow was going to go uh, number one. Um, what do you think of his skill set and, and how good of an NFL player can he be? I'm a, I'm a big fan of Joe. I, I studied a lot of him this year, him and Tua and some of the other quarterbacks. And I mean, the biggest thing I love about him is his poise and composure. He's a guy I feel like when he steps in the locker room, he changes the temperature, the pulse of the team. Uh, he's just a natural leader, and that's what I love about him. Uh, he has that it factor that we say. Uh, you know, not the biggest arm by all means, but enough to make all the throws, great rhythm and timing with his feet, very smooth. Uh, so I think it's a great pick for the Bengals. You know, it's funny. You know, I was thinking during it, too, I was like, man, what if, what if the, you know, someone offered the Bengals a lot, you know, and, and you still have Andy Dalton on the roster, which I'm a fan of Andy. I think he's a really good quarterback. You know, do you build the rest of the pieces to your team? But at the end of the day, you can't and you, you, you won't pass up someone like Joe Burrow. So it's good to see for Cincinnati and Mr. Brown, you know, this move, because I think it's going to be great for the franchise. And I think they're sitting in a great spot heading into day two with the opportunity now to protect Joe Burrow with some of the offense linemen out here, especially Josh Jones from Houston. How important, I mean, you know more than anybody how important the quarterback position is. How badly do you have to have that solidified in today's game before you can start doing all those other things? I mean, it's the most important key. And we've seen it with, you know, the Rockets, right? Toledo the last few years. When you deal with injuries and nothing about – the quarterback's ability to play. But when you deal with injuries and you have guys being plugged in on and off throughout a season the last two years, it's tough to win. So you really do. If you can have a stable guy, someone that brings that mentality to the locker room, it goes a long way. And that's why I'm a big fan at the quarterback position. It's not all about ability. It's about being that right leader, making the right decisions, your feet and timing and rhythm and, and just getting it done that way. So I think Joe Burrow does bring it all. You know, I was a huge fan of Tua, too. I was really glad that Miami didn't mess that one up and they took, took the chance on Tua. I know we're all concerned about his health and, and whatnot, but I just – I think Tua is really special as well. All right, let's talk about the Lions. Uh, they – I made – I think it's probably a safe pick taking Jeff Okuda, uh, who everybody saw at Ohio State, and he is just such a solid corner – who comes in and I think you don't have to worry about him at all at the next level. Um, what did you think of the Lions pick of Jeff Okuda? Yeah, I mean, you're right. It was, it was safe and it was expected, right? I think everyone on their mock draft had that pick, but it's a solid pick. I mean, you can't be mad at him for it. The only thing I was wondering and I was waiting to see is if they could have traded out of that spot and still had the opportunity to get Okuda a little later on. But you know, there's probably not, not much going on. You know, I thought maybe Miami would, would move up to get to a – and everyone stayed put in the top ten, which was kind of unusual. But I think you should be happy if you're a Lions fan. I mean, the dude's a solid football player. He really can do it all. 
Um, so you have to be, you know, happy with that, especially when the Lions moved on this past year. They, that was a need they had to fill, and they did it through free agency a little bit. And I think this is the next step, and he's a great player. Uh, let's talk about the Browns a little bit. You go get uh, an offensive tackle who played right tackle in college. At the next level, he's probably going to be a left tackle. Someone that you and, and the upgrades they've made at the ta two tackle positions in the offseason. You get Jack Conklin, and now you have uh, Jedrick Wills. How happy do you have to be if you're a Browns fan to know that you've now got two bookends there, especially if you're a quarterback? I was going to say Baker Mayfield was probably celebrating last night. You know, I just really like Jedrick Wills' game. You know, you could tell he has some tenacity in him. Uh, he fires off the ball, you know, really plays aggressive. The thing I would like to see is him finish better. Uh, but, man, his run blocking grade, you know, 90-something this year for PFF, he was pretty impressive. So, I think you do have to be excited if you're, if you're Cleveland. I think you have the skill positions offensively. And now to keep building, you, you know, you pointed out Jack Conklin – this offseason was, was a great uh, sign in uh, signing. And now to go through the draft and get Wills out of Alabama, I think is a huge move for the Browns. All right. Do you have some winners and losers maybe from last night, just uh, and some general thoughts about what you saw? Yeah, it was, like you said, it was exciting that it was on and it gave us something to watch. Uh, and it got me out of bedtime, right, with the kids. I was like, all right, babe, I'm sorry, but 7.30, I want to be sitting down in front of this TV. <laughs> so I was fortunate I didn't have to do the shower baths and diapers and all that last night, so God bless Miranda. Um, but, you know, I was kind of – I feel like the Raiders always are reaching for guys. You know, they got Ar Arnett out of Ohio State, and I think he's a good player, but I don't think he was a first-rounder. Um, I love that Miami, like I said, didn't pass up Tua, and they had three first-round draft picks. Um, that was that was good by them. I think, you know, you got to look at the Broncos and the Cowboys, right? The Broncos landed Jerry Judy at 15 was, I mean, awesome. If you could have told them that was, that was going to happen. And then the Cowboys landed C.D. Lamb. I mean, Dak Prescott, you know, after last night is probably saying, hey, where can I sign uh, Jerry Jones? Can I just get this contract going so we can uh, move on and get ready to play? So I think the Broncos and Cowboys got to be ecstatic and, you, you know, there's a lot of good value heading into day two. And, and I talked about the Bengals sitting there, that they could really help that offensive line. I, I like that Jones out of Houston graded very well for PFF last year. So the Bengals, man, could really come out of the first two rounds, you know, really happy. I, I didn't even uh, warn you about this, Mo. I was going to ask you, there's a chance that, that we could have to play this football season with nobody in the stands. As a football player, can you imagine what it would be like to have to play this season um, in empty stadiums or whatever? And do you think it's possible that, that the NFL could, could do something like that? You know, it's crazy to think about. I mean, honestly, and the thing you have to think about is, you know, you figure there's about 60-some football players, right? There's 50, a 53-man roster on NFL teams. Um, and then you have some practice squad guys, but they're around for the games. You have your whole staff. You have the training staff, equipment guys. You have a lot of guys on the field. So, and then if, if some media is going to be there or not, you know, there's a lot right together. So uh, that alone is kind of interesting to think about is where this virus continues to go. In college, you have more players on the sideline, you know. So, um, it, it, you know, it's going to be interesting when you talk about playing in front of no fans. It was always a little, like, eerie and different when we would scrimmage against teams during training camp. You know, when I was with the Rams for a short stint, we're practicing against the Tennessee Titans. And, you know, it felt like little, like the little Giants. I mean, I'm watching, watching Cal Vandenbosch from the Tennessee Titans with his sleeves cut, veins picked, you know, sticking out. He had red contacts in. <laughs> and this is my third year in the NFL. And I'm looking like, oh, man, dude. I – I don't want to mess with that dude. And it's like, you know, it's like a dirt field you're practicing on. So, you know, it makes me think of those things. But, you know, if it's something that needs to be done, I know it's tough not playing in front of fans because it gives you the excitement and the juice. And, and that's why, you know, we continue to play, even though we play for the love of the game. It's fun to play in front of the fans. The fans bring so much to the game. Hopefully, you know, it's not at that point and we could just have fun and, and everyone gets back to normal. But 
you know, I'm just praying we get back to some normalcy soon uh, for everyone's sanity. But in the meantime, I'm trying to stay sane over here and, and stay busy with this stuff. All right. And uh, last thing I want to ask you about, so social's back open now. Uh, back. You, you got, so you have, you have carry out and everything uh, ready to go. Yeah. And, you know, and that's why I like during this time, man, I think of a lot of small businesses cause it's tough. And, and not only that, but the employees, you know, everyone's going through a difficult time right now and, and you see it all around and we're all in different situations and struggling with different things. So I really mean it when I'm, when I'm praying for everyone out there, I see a lot of great things. You know, Jason Candle did commute, uh, um, taking care of the community and doing different things like that. There's, so everyone comes together. But yeah, social, we're open back up now for carry out curbside. Uh, I, I know Miranda and I are picking it up tonight because we're kind of excited. And, and they, they're even selling drinks. So I'm not going to lie, I'm going to get a bl Bloody Mary tonight. Uh, so I'm going to have fun with it. But yeah, we're back. Social's back. We're back in business. So <laughs> give us a call. <laughs> That's perfect. Bruce, I, I really appreciate you, man. Uh, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time, and uh, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, no problem, brother.